everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and LittleShaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today, I wanted to talk to you about dealing with narcissistic people just in general. It's always better not to deal with narcissists and other people who have proven themselves to be toxic if you can help it. However, there may be times when you need to deal with them, such as at your job or if you share custody of children. In these situations, it's best to have some tools that you can utilize to help. This channel has several episodes of the show about that, where we cover things like gray rocking, keeping the conversation short, not offering extra information, and other things you can do to protect yourself and reduce the stress caused by interacting with this kind of person. You can't control them, of course, and you can't make them stop their behavior or choose to behave differently, but you can work to reduce the stress it causes you. However, probably the most stressful and damaging thing about dealing with pathologically narcissistic people in particular is the differing realities. In many ways, Narcissistic people live in a different reality than you do. Their reality is dictated by fantasy, beliefs, and feelings, not facts. Now, of course, fantasy, beliefs, and feelings influence everyone's experiences on some level, but usually not to the degree that we see in pathologically narcissistic personalities. For example, most people fit their feelings to the facts. That means their emotions are related to factual things that happened. Someone said something rude to me, then I felt angry. Someone said something confrontational to me, then I felt defensive. Someone said something mean to me, then I felt hurt. For narcissists, their feelings dictate the facts. It's backwards. So it might look something more like, I felt angry, then I perceived that someone was being rude to me. I felt defensive, then I perceived that someone was being confrontational toward me. I felt hurt, then I perceived someone was being mean. You might have heard me say many times, you can't worry about not upsetting narcissists because narcissists are already upset. Because they can't take ownership of their emotions, narcissists will generally experience this as the other person causing their feelings. Their experience of the situation appears to be roughly the same as your experience of an emotional response to events, even if in practice it's not the same. Except, many times with narcissists, the feelings don't match the facts. In other words, they seem to experience this as emotionally responding to an event, just like everybody else does, even though that's not what it is. But their interpretation of the events often makes no sense, even in that context. It makes sense to feel attacked and get angry if someone calls you a rude name. It does not make sense to feel attacked and get angry if someone asks you to take the garbage out. There is often a disconnect between a narcissist's subjective experience, their emotional experience, and the objective reality, the factual things that happened. This causes enormous distress for people who have to interact with them. One of the ways to deal with this is to stay grounded in your reality. It's important to remember that it's very likely that your version of reality doesn't make any more sense to a narcissist than their version of reality makes to you. They don't think like you. They don't experience things the way that you do, and they don't perceive or interpret them the same way that you do. They just don't, and you're not going to be able to make them see it your way any more than they can make you see it their way. The two experiences are not compatible, and they may not even be remotely similar. This person is having a very different experience than you are, and remembering that will help you resist the urge to try to explain to them that their version of events is incorrect or mistaken. It does no good anyway. It only serves to convince them that you're untrustworthy or perhaps even dangerous to them. It's also possible that sometimes they're just lying. People often get bogged down in trying to decipher if it's one or the other, but the truth is, it doesn't even matter. In the end, the result is the same whether someone's lying about what happened or whether they really do remember it differently because you can't change it either way. Most likely, it's a combination of both, just like it is with everybody else in the world. As with people who are not narcissists, there are some things that they lie about and some things that they're wrong about. However, If this happens all the time, and if their perception of events and their subjective experiences are vastly different from yours, the way it is with pathologically narcissistic people, you can't get anywhere with this at all. 
It would be like two people who saw two totally different movies trying to talk about them as if they're the same movie. This is not a conversation that can even be had, so learn to stop trying to have it. Narcissists need other people to validate their reality for survival, which is why they push about this so hard. But you don't need them to validate yours to know the truth. They won't anyway, either because they genuinely didn't experience it the way that you did, or because admitting the truth is not considered safe by them. You're not going to get what you want. All you will get is confusion, stress, and invalidation. Learn to trust yourself so that you can validate your own experiences and you don't need to rely on someone who is unstable and manipulative. It's important to remember too that you're dealing with someone who at the very least has extremely disordered and dysfunctional thinking and who at the most is using that dysfunctional thinking to try to intentionally confuse and manipulate you. Either way, you have to truly consider the source. This person is not exactly reliable when it comes to perceiving reality or reporting what they do perceive honestly. Learning to remember this and remind yourself of it helps enormously with the terrible stress and confusion caused by someone relentlessly trying to force you into a reality that does not match your own experiences. As we discussed in the episode of the show called Narcissists Are Like a Magic Trick, the human brain relies on input from the eyes and the ears for survival. Things you know to be true are going to take a back seat to that. This means if you know, if you know that narcissists are unstable and disordered, but they're standing in front of you seeming to be reacting and responding normally, your brain is going to want to believe what it sees. It's going to put more stock in that. This can make the confusion in these situations much worse, and it's one of the many reasons no contact is so important. When you are dealing with this kind of person, remind yourself who you are dealing with and how they are, and keep reminding yourself so that you don't allow yourself to be forced into the position of defending your own reality against something that doesn't match up with anything that you have experienced or can understand. This is an unwinnable battle, and being forced to defend your reality undermines it. Remember that this person cannot and will not make any space for your perspective at all. Their reality is so fragile and so dependent on validation from other people that they just can't do that. You will not convince them or even make them consider it. The only thing you might succeed at doing is undermining your own reality and possibly even confusing yourself. It also helps to remember that everybody's different and because everybody is different, there are some things that you're just not going to be able to understand. Nobody is going to react or think or believe or feel or experience the same way that you do. They are a different person with completely different life experiences, thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and everything else. They have a different mind, different body, different spirit. Some people are really, really different from you. They are so different that you're not going to be able to understand or make sense out of some of the things they say or that they do. Learn to be okay with that because worrying about it is just going to cause you serious stress and you can't do anything about it. Some things are too different to understand and that's okay. It has to be okay because it is what it is. You don't need to understand everything because what you already know is enough. You also don't have to automatically validate the experiences of other people. We're always told to validate other people's experiences and we should, but there does come a point where this can become absurd. Validating someone else's subjective experience when it is so far outside of an objective experience is not only not helpful, it can be dangerous, especially for you. Validating a narcissist's experience, for example, helps make it real for them. If that experience is that you are evil or otherwise trying to hurt them, this can go very badly for you. Of course, they're still going to believe what they believe regardless, but it's not a good idea to help that along by validating it for them and addressing it at all is validating it in these situations. Don't get in the weeds with a narcissist in this way, talking about what the definition of is is, or arguing with blatant, absurd gaslighting, or being fed a bunch of word salad. Validate yourself. People don't need to agree with your experience in order for it to be valid. It's valid on its own, but you have to believe that. You have to act on that. You have to stay grounded in that. To help you do that, remind yourself often that you know what happened. 
Some people find it helpful to write things down in a journal or make backups of digital communications. Other people record themselves talking about what happened or make a record of conversations that they're having with people who report different realities or who they believe to be gaslighting them. Reality testing your conclusions to see if they make sense can help a lot here as well. Using these things to remind yourself that you do understand what's going on can be extremely helpful and when you learn to trust yourself more to validate your experiences, you're not going to need to do that anymore. On littleshaman.org's learning tree section, there is a self-paced workshop you can take to help with that. It's called Rebuilding Trust with Yourself After Abuse. You could also join us for any of our live virtual workshops as well. In the end, the best way to stay grounded in your reality is to deal with this kind of person as little as possible. There is no way for it not to affect you at least a little bit if you're around it, so the best idea is to go no contact and stay no contact if you possibly can. If you can't, always consider the source. Always remind yourself that you know what's happening. Others not agreeing with that doesn't change anything. So I hope that clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype worldwide. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I teach workshops, seminars, and clinics throughout the year, so if you're interested in seeing what we are running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. And if you are interested in joining our support group where we meet, several times monthly with access to exclusive content and more. You can find that on littleshaman.org as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.